Hello, welcome to the Avaland video guide to the Onkyo TX NR609 home cinema receiver. We're going to talk you through the features of this unit, its setup menus, and its connections. The new Feature Pack 600 series from Onkyo has audio streaming, 3D compatibility, and of course, support for Dolby True HD and DTS HD, the lossless sound formats. Uh, on the front panel, you can see it's sort of a clean and neat, straight front panel. The buttons are very, very well hidden just under the uh, display. The button styling is actually carried over from the reference series of Hi-Fi. Uh, it's got the 4K video scaling from the Marvel QD video processing, THX certification, and all UK units have actually been updated prior to launch with Spotify, so you can actually over the networking input, you can use your Spotify Premium account to access various different playlists from Spotify. There's a USB input on the front as well, which you can use with iPod Digital. So if you just plug your iPod in via USB, uh, the front display will firstly come up and, and prompt you to go into extended mode, which is what we're showing here. You can see at the bottom, mode, extended. Um, this means that you can actually navigate using the on-screen display rather than using the front panel uh, or just using your iPod. Uh, what happens, obviously, you just scroll through it folder to folder, depending on the artist, so how we've got it here. Uh, and then you select the song you want to listen to, and then after a few seconds it will come up with the album artwork there. Moving on to the rear panel, um, you can see the all-important Ethernet port on the uh, top left there next to the HDMI. This unit's got six HDMI inputs if you include the input on the front. The front input isn't assignable, the other five are. The Ethernet port, you can actually upgrade uh, with the USB. There's a wireless dongle available, the UWF-1. Uh, wireless dongle which is available so you can actually add this to a wireless network and you've got the universal port there which is for uh, adding in the universal port UP1, UPA1 iPod dock or the UPDT1 DAB module. If you want to set this unit up for uh, using banana plugs as with most amplifiers sold in this country you will need to just move the uh, small plastic bungs from the back of the unit which you just do by driving a small screw in and uh, pulling the, the bungs out and then just put in your 4mm banana plug. Okay now we're going to take you under the lid of the Onkyo TX NR609. Moving on to the lid of the 609, the first thing you'll see is the heat sink and the fan. You don't really need to worry about the fan because it's only going to you know, come on at high volume when the volume of the unit is going to come out the noise of the fan. You can also see the high current power supply there, the amplification board is on the top left, and then the VGA input which is just above the HDMI video board on the right hand side of the unit. Moving on to the menus now, the first thing you'll see is the monitor out. This is where you set the output resolution, so you can go from anything from auto and through up to right up to 4K upscaling, um, which there's no real display devices yet, but this is a really great unit because you can future proof yourself against further display devices. Um, moving down to the HDMI input, this is where you assign your inputs. So you can see there that the front input is disabled, that's just input 6, but with the different inputs you can say, well I don't want BD DVD to be on HDMI 1, I actually want that to be on component 1, and you can alter that um, depending on which inputs you want. I mean, if you've got a unit connected up uh, three different ways, so composite component and HDMI, the unit will actually determine, the 609 will determine which signal it, de it deems best, so it will take HDMI first, you unplug that, it will default back to component, if you unplug the component, it will go back to the composite. Uh, moving on to the speaker settings, uh, the first thing is just impedance, is 4 to 6 ohms, this will happily drive any speakers that are 8 ohms as well, so you don't need to worry about that. And then if you're going to biamp, biamping is if you want to improve the stereo playback for the performance of the unit, um, ignore the bit on the back that says 7.1 channel use only because you can use it to buy amp. If you're just running a 5.1 system, you can uh, use the extra amplifiers because this unit has got 7 amps in it. You can use the extra amplifiers to drive uh, you know, 2 amplifiers per front speaker, which is going to improve the audio playback for, for stereo and for films as well. Um, the speaker configuration is depends on you know, the setup of speakers you're using, as it says. So, are you using a subwoofer or not? And then, what kind of speakers you're using um, across the you know, the rest of your room. So if you're using full band speakers, so a larger floor stand or a bookshelf speaker, um, or whether you're just using smaller satellites, and at what point you want to set, you know, how low is the frequency response of the speaker, and what point do you want to send the signal to the subwoofer rather than sending it to the to the speaker? And then, are you even using <laughs> are you even using the subwoofer and the low pass filter of the of the subwoofer itself? So again, what's the lowest point or highest point you want to send the signal to the subwoofer? So you've got a lot of settings there depending on which sort of speaker setup you're using and what kind of speakers you're using all around. You might be using full band speakers at the front and then satellites at the rear. Speaker distance again is very self-explanatory, it's just how far away the speakers are, but as it says on the screen it's from the listening position, not between the speakers or from the amplifier. Um, nice and simple. The auto setup can do this, but we don't use the auto setup here because ultimately your ear is far more fine-tuned than any microphone is ever going to be. Um, you can set this up to your specification rather than to how Odyssey thinks that the unit should sound. I mean, the Odyssey setups are good as well, and you should try both really. Um, but I generally do the Odyssey setup and then go in and fine tune it yourself. The equaliser settings here is per, not per channel, but per position of speaker. So you've got the front, the centre, and the surround. You can't do it per speaker, so you can't go front left equaliser, front right equaliser. It's, this is settings 
per sort of placing of the of the unit of the of the speakers. So. Uh, and then there's the THX audio settings as well, so I'm using an Ultra 2 or Select 2 shovel for is the loudness plus on or not, and then whether you want to preserve preserve your THX settings. Um, the audio adjust menu, which we're coming up to, is just the various settings for sort of Dolby and DTS, and different um, matrixing, um, different sort of settings, and you can see there per um, audio setting. Um, we're just going to talk a little bit more about the biamping. Uh, the different the reason that I'd, I'd suggest biamping, if you are using a speaker that's possible to do it with, is um, the only one of the few criticisms I really have of the 609 is that its stereo performance is about, I'd say, average. Um, but really, at its price point, I wouldn't really expect an AV receiver to sound phenomenal. You know, ultimately, uh, an AV receiver at this point is not going to be as good as a stereo amplifier at this price point. It's just the way it is. But with biamping, you're going to improve the sound for stereo an awful lot. Uh, moving on to the source setup, obviously we've not, the Odyssey at the top is grayed out because we've not used the Odyssey auto setup. Uh, Intelli volume is equalising the volume across the different inputs and then AV sync is just uh, your different lip sync settings. Name edit, again it's quite self-explanatory so you can uh, rename the unit, the, set, the inputs as and how you want them. So you might want ga the game input for example, you might want that to be PS3 or Xbox or Wii. Um, you might want the cable or TV input to say Sky HD or Virgin. Um, it's just you know, very simple, but it means that someone who's not necessarily particularly au fait with AV receivers is able to scroll through the inputs and understand what's what. You know, it might be that you you know you have a child or, or a partner that you know isn't particularly good at, at using technology, but it means that they can show, you know, they can see which in, which input they're going to be on, which is nice, nice for them. Uh, the listening mode presets just select the source and then use the last valid or a dedicated listening or DSP mode per input. It's here where the uh, four game DSP modes that uh, Onkyo use are uh, available to do. So you've seen come up to those in a minute, uh, which is uh, rock, uh, sports, action, and RPG. So if you want to use different a different DSP depending on you know for the game that you're you're playing, there is a DSP mode dedicated to that. Last valid is just going to be whatever you last had that input, last had that had that source on, what it, you know is going to be the preset. The miscellaneous uh, is again it's nice and simple. There's not a huge amount in there. The volume setup. So the volume display. Absolute or relative, so that's going to be either in numbers or in minus dB. We'd normally recommend to put it in minus dB, and when you are using the amp, and this is very important, we, you know, please do not make sure you don't drive it above zero dB. Zero dB is what the your unit is actually, you know, the level of the signal is recorded at. If you put it over that, you're going to distort, you may risk blowing up your speakers, you risk damaging your amplifier, so please make sure you don't drive above that. For the most part, you won't really need to go above sort of minus, I find sort of minus 15, it tends to be quite, it tends to be quite loud, I and mean, obviously it depends on your speakers and how large you want to go, we would recommend you don't go above above zero dB. Um, the remote ID is just in case you've got a couple of different Onkyo units, you don't want the, uh, un the only units to conflict with each other so you can assign a different ID to that remote control. Uh, the HDMI settings, the you need to have the RHID on uh, for the HDMI pass-through uh, to work, uh, we've discovered in the past, so it's you know it can be a bit tricky to getting all that all to work, but you can also got the audio return in the HDMI settings there, so if you've got a, a HDMI 1.4 enabled television uh, with audio return channel, you can use the tuner inside the TV to send the audio back down the HDMI cable, provided you've got the proper cable, to the amplifier as well. Uh, we'd recommend something like the AudioQuest HDMI cable in to go with that. Uh, with the firmware update, you can uh, actually update this receiver over the network or via the USB input. Uh, you can also update the firmware on your universal port item, so the UPA1 and the UPDT1 via the network or via USB when they're plugged into this unit. Um, the remote control setup is if you know if you want to program up uh, your different um, you know settings for your remote control, your different buttons on the remote control. Uh, and then locking the setup is you know if you have got you know a spouse or child you're not particularly okay with technology you can change that around. Now we're going to show you the networking interface of the 609. Moving on to the networking now um, with the IP control if you start with the IP address of the unit That'll take you to its web interface, which is quite simple. Um, the control for the over the IP is limited. Uh, you show the product inf uh, info, uh, its networking name, your favourite internet radio stations, and then some of the networking settings. It's not a huge amount you can do over the web setup, but you can have a bit of a play with it. Setting up sharing on this, uh, which only obviously this is with Windows, uh, so you, you need to make sure that the 609 is enabled and you allow it for sharing. Um, you can see here that what, we, what we're going through. This is allowing you so you can stream audio across your home network to your um, to your 609 
and just assess these three windows that you need to do with this. I mean, obviously, we're going into the networking menu here. And you need to make sure that media sharing, you see at the bottom there, is turned on so people in the voice on network can access the shared music. It, you can um, also, in the uh, settings for Windows Media Player, you can go to the to configure sharing and ensure that the 609, what you see there, is also set up for sharing. And then you add your files to your library in Windows Media Player. That way. The DLNA interface on the 609 is very similar to the iPod digital interface that we showed you earlier. So you can browse the folders, select the file to play. Unfortunately, with DLNA, there's no album artwork. So there's no album artwork over the Ethernet or the UWF1 wireless dongle. But you can still access all of your music over the DLNA settings and you can browse, say, by genre, by artist, any normal way you can browse. As I say, it's very, very similar to the iPod interface earlier, so it's nice and simple to use. And you can see, you know, each folder, you know, so if you want to have a playlist, um, a folder for, you know, different playlists and lots of different, you know, you don't have to scroll by artist, you can do it by genre. And it's very, very simple. It's a beautiful interface. It's really, really easy to set up as we've shown and use. But as I said, unfortunately, there is no album artwork. And at the moment, you know, there's, it doesn't do video streaming. Um, over DLNA, but you see the, the network interface there, and you've got you've also got as well as as well as do Spotify, there's LastFM uh, and Napster. Um, LastFM is really neat little system. This is like an internet radio. Uh, this is the VTuner internet radio interface, which a lot of um, people will have, will have seen and using lots of different manufacturers' units. Um, the first thing it defaults to in this country, because it knows we're in this country, is BBC. So if you just pop down to BBC Two, and very shortly, while it, it takes a few seconds to pop up, but whilst it's playing, you see you give the Station ID, BBC Radio 2, the most listened to station in the UK, which is like the tag for the radio, and then the radio logo does pop up as well. Comes out. Let's talk to you a little bit about the pros and cons of the 609. Obviously with pros you've got the networking capability, which at this point price point is phenomenal, both wide and wireless with the additional adapter. The six 3D HDMI inputs are you know, really good, there's loads of different devices you can connect up to it, and the iPod digital USB with a quick port of your iPod just in the front. The cons, there's no multi-channel pre-out, uh, which means you can't upgrade the amplification, which isn't much of a problem at this price point. And it is average for stereo, but again, at this price point, you're not going to find much else. There isn't any Bluetooth availability, but the only, there's only you know, sort of adapters that you can do this with, but not with this particular amp. But again, you've got all the Wi-Fi connectivity. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video guide to the Onkyo TX NR609. If you'd like to read more about this product, or to see some more video reviews, then please do visit our website, www.avland.co.uk. Thanks very much.